This week, the hotel inspector's on a crusade. On one hand, he's the kind of pastor of the church. On the other side, he's a really chippy bastard. Alex Polites is going to kick my butt all over Clan Dead now, isn't she? This is a written slap in the face. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't get into an argument with the customer, because it's one you're always going to lose. I probably know more than Alex Polites he does. Bollocks to that, mate. This is their last chance. The Alexandra, a two-star, 14-bedroom hotel in the Welsh resort of Landidno. Alexandra Hotel, good afternoon. Can I help you? Run by part-time minister John Humberston and his Algerian partner Bashir. Not everything. You can find Bashir everywhere. You find Bashir in the breakfast. You find Bashir in the reception. Check the rooms. You find me everywhere in the hotel who joined forces three years ago to turn around this historic jewel in Wales's tourist crown. We took on a very old building which needed a lot of, I think, more than TLC. It needed a lot of LSD as well. <laughs> Sounds like a jet taking off. <laughs> and it wasn't just the building that was in need of repair. It had had all sorts of bad publicity. It had made headline news in the, in the North Wales paper as being the Wild West. But John's finding the price of progress a little more costly than he imagined. There's a tap turned on. It's running money. And that, that money's just going down the drain. And the barrage of bad reviews has left him rather hot under the collar. The person who came up with the customer is always right, must have been a customer. Reception was up a steep flight of stairs. Very small fridge on the floor. Where did she want us to put the fridge? On the ceiling, in the bed with her? It's basically a nonsense complaint that's going to get dealt with in my normal, professional, wonderful manner. It seems John's approach to customer service can be quite unforgiving. I know I should count to ten before I write some of the responses, but I have to admit that I... I normally get to about four, and then steam's coming out my ears. My reply, I think it's only fair to say, is, is that if they had a terrible stay, then there was that, that was their fault. I suggest the lady got, got a life, because she was clearly boring me to death with uh, what she was writing there. With low occupancy, empty tables in the restaurant and profits non-existent, John and Bashir are holding on with a wing and a prayer. We're getting to, to the point now where it's, it's make or break time. We can't carry on like this. The, the money's going to run out, then what? And worse, a recent fire has threatened to send the business into meltdown. So it's devastating, really, that fire. We've lost an awful lot of revenue. And the knock-on effect is bad as well, because having the scaffolding everywhere just doesn't do us any favours. It's pretty bad. The boys have summoned award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi to Landidno in the hope of some divine inspiration. I'm rather hoping that the hotel inspector will guide us away from the cliff. We're hurtling towards it. We need somebody to apply the brakes and grab hold of the steering wheel, I think. Obviously, Alex is going to pick up on, on quite a lot of things. She, she's a professional, and there's certain areas where I'm sure I probably know more than Alex Polizzi does. There are 200 hotels and bed and breakfasts here, which is more than Cardiff. In a town with so much competition, there's bound to be winners and also quite a few losers. Can Alex turn the tide of the hotel's fortunes? First impressions aren't good, and it's not just the unsightly scaffolding that's causing offence. I am outside the Alexandra Hotel, which is not a thing of great beauty, I think I'm safe in saying. The signage is awful. I know that it's a cheap hotel, but still, there's a lot one could do just to tidy up the outside to make it look less like a DOS house. And there's little sign of improvement inside. Please don't take our room key with you. Stop! Going out late, then you need 
a late access tag from reception. Have you got our key in your pocket? All right, all right, keep your hair on. The overwhelming impression is not welcome, it's more like bugger off. Hello. Hello. I'm Alex Polizzi. Hello, Alex. I'm John. Nice to meet you. You're welcome to the Alexandra. Alex? To help get the measure of the challenge ahead, Alex will stay the night. Is it very heavy? She's booked into room 11, a family room priced at £65 for bed and breakfast. Right, this is your room, Alex. Rather more beds than I need. Yes, yes, just in case you brought any company with you. There's your key. Thank you very okay. much. Well, this isn't the worst room I've been in. I don't particularly like being in a room with three beds, but it all looks quite clean. Um, it's very bright. Basic room, but this room only costs £65 for a family. That's a very good rate. You think you will be fine with Alex? I'm ready for it. All right, that's Fortify fine. myself with apricots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slightly old-fashioned bathroom. Possibly the smallest bath I've ever seen. But, again, perfectly clean and acceptable. Proper hangers. I didn't expect that. No problem here. Have you heard anything? No, I don't heard, but I think she's uh, around rooms and she's... Uh... On the warpath? Snug. Very, very snug. On the plus side, it's very clean. On the downside, it's very noisy. I said noisy. Like having you. Your auntie come to visit you, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Until she no, says something wrong. Then it'll be like the mother-in-law. <laughs> this is rather a dramatic colour for a bedroom. Welcome to the Alexandra Hotel. We serve breakfast from 8am until 10am. This means you must have finished your breakfast by 10am. <laughs> I honestly have never heard anything like it. It's so condescending. You know, you must have finished your breakfast by 10 o'clock. Well, bollocks to that, mate. Clearly, the well of goodwill isn't overflowing at the Alexandra. And as Alex probes deeper, it seems it may have completely run dry. The room folder did make me think that I ought to check the internet review sites and see what kind of impression John and Bashir make on their customers. And this has been very illuminating. Our room was clean, tidy and very comfortable. However, we did find a mouldy, cheesy sock. And his response is, what utter nonsense. An award of one because you found a sock. Wow, you must be so perfect. Since you had a clean, tidy and comfortable room, then I suggest you know where to put the sock. <laughs> I don't think that's a particularly professional <laughs> response to a fairly reasonable complaint. This is a written slap in the face. Alex's investigations have revealed that despite John's unusual directions, it's not the quality of the bedrooms that's preventing potential punters from finding their way to the Alexandra. Will the underperforming restaurant run by Bashir provide any more food for thought? We don't go into fast food, we're going for fresh food here. I just can't understand why we're not getting people through the door to try it. Hi. Hello, Alex. All ready for dinner? Yes, I am. Charlie good. I believe we are seating you here tonight. Thanks, John. OK. What do you recommend? Are Indulge. the soups made in-house or are they uh, not? E e we will actually make the soups, yeah. Yes, soup. lovely. I'll have yeah. a minestrone, if please. OK. Thank okay. you. OK. Thanks, you John. It. Alex is ready to order now. She wants a uh, minestrone soup, please. So, I absolutely hate this menu. Like, for example, pasta. I have never heard of pork pasta. It's just wrong. I'm really hoping the soup is homemade, cos I will know. I mean, honestly, prawn cocktail and melon with parma ham? I mean, are they being ironic? It would be so much better to halve this menu that you make it a slightly more attractive environment in which to sit. I mean... Good Hi, good evening. Thank you very much. Soup. Thank you. You're welcome. 
doesn't taste homemade to me. Nothing homemade is usually this colour. The Alexandra Hotel in Landidno, run by train fanatic and part-time minister John Humberston. To run a hotel is, is like having a baby that never grows up. And his Algerian partner, Bashir. Bashir! Back in, in. Dismal occupancy, a failing restaurant. Lots of room, no customers. And a bad reputation have left the business on its knees. We're definitely into a loss making situation. With the Alexandra facing the last rites, John has called in the hotel inspector for help. Alex Police is going to kick my butt all over Clan Did now, isn't she? But so far, Alex has discovered the milk of human kindness has turned a little sour. The overwhelming impression is not welcome, it's more like bugger off. After spending the night, the hotel inspector has woken up ice cold in the Alexandra. It was a very cold night. This is a big room with lots of windows, no heating on. Will breakfast help warm her mood? Buongiorno, signorita. To break the ice with guests, John that. likes to place a flag on every table. But the dining room's mismatched decor is failing to raise a smile with the hotel inspector. Pretty depressing room. The pictures everywhere are slightly inappropriate, I would say. It all feels a bit cold and cheerless. All the printed literature suggests very different identities for the hotel. We've got a bright red breakfast menu, nothing to do with the cafe downstairs. And then there's this, with the rather chic Alexandra Hotel font. And I noticed that there's yet another menu on the door. Good morning. So tell me about the menu on the door. Oh, that's the old Italian menu. It's still there, yeah. It should have been... Uh, taken down. Taken down and smashed and burnt. I'll do it now. All right, darling. I would like poached eggs on toast. Poached eggs. <sighs> yes, I did notice that Mrs Polizzi wanted poached eggs. Ha, ah, surprise, surprise. Fantastic. Thanks. I think the person who has a poached egg normally is the one that, you know, would like to waltz around in Gucci shoes and posh handbags and... I don't think they go to the same shop that I do. First impressions... Uh, you know, two eggs, two rashers of bacon. What's to complain about? With breakfast passing muster, Alex wants to know why John's customer service skills are less than sunny side up. Do you like running a hotel? Yes. Because I don't think I'm completely unfair in suggesting that you don't like criticism. No, I don't like criticism, no, I'm terribly... I have criticism. had a look at some of your responses on an unnamed internet review site. Uh -huh. You sound like an angry man, and you don't look, you don't appear to me as an angry man. I think you do your business as a service, right. because you're not actually that person. Alex is keen to demonstrate that John's lack of warmth may be leaving some of his customers cold. I'm sure you know what I'm going to point out. <laughs> Please don't take our room key with you. Stop! I mean, all of this. It's quite overwhelming. It's like Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know. And the confused entrance is also sending out mixed messages. We have this sign. We have that sign. We have this, which none of which are particularly good adverts for you. I don't think you should ever forget how important curbside appeal is. Alex's refusal to pull her punches has left John feeling a little bruised. Just didn't like what I heard. Guess I don't take criticism very easily, do I? I never ever thought of our dining room as depressing. That was a bit of a shock, to be honest with you. I know what I was going to do with a flag, and that would have been most improper. Alex feels that if she's going to provide any answers to the Alexandra's problems, it's time for some hard questions. So how bad is the situation here? How long do you think you can survive? 
not long. We've got to start turning around things within weeks, not months. To help John and Bashir, Alex has a three-point plan. She believes that to shed its questionable reputation, the Alexandra Hotel needs a relaunch. And she has the unwelcoming and unnecessary clutter firmly in her sights. First thing is we need to get you an identity. Everything from all the signage that we're going to take down and then decide what we put up again, to the information, to how you present menus, the whole lot. I mean, this will just give you two examples of two current menus. Does someone have a problem making decisions? Why is the font different on every single page? Everything is just completely different. Next, John's customer service skills are going to need a reboot. If I read the internet reviews and I hadn't met you, I would have thought you were a complete Jekyll and Hyde character because 50% of the reviews cannot praise you highly enough. And the other 50 talk about you as if you're the devil himself. <laughs> devil you know, incarnate. John, I think you, you're slightly off-putting on the internet. Well, I've tried to bag over the head when I come on. I'm a little <laughs> here, but... No, I'm just yeah. going to ban you from responding to any negative comment. He's allowed three sentences. Thank you for your comments. We will try and improve. Don't get into an argument with the customer because it's one you're always going to lose. Finally, if the Alexandra is to survive the next six months, the boys must start attracting a wider market. We need to tempt locals in because locals are what keeps you going out of season. They think we're the Wild West. I know, darling, but you're not, are you? And Alex believes the presently underwhelming cafe and restaurant area might be the way to the locals' hearts. I want us to focus on the cafe. Walking along, you're not quite sure what you are, what you're offering, who you're appealing to. I would like that to be the area that I do up for you. I think we can make it look much more appealing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Alex departs, hoping her intervention hasn't come too late. When they started, that place had a terrible reputation. They've cleaned it up, they've invested a lot of money, and they're doing worse. And I have to say, I think, in a way, that that's down to John. No one takes criticism easily, and we've had to take some criticism on board. She doesn't pull a punches. So we'll come out fighting when the next bell sounds. Obviously, they are in quite a lot of trouble, and time is running out fast. Do I have enough time to save them? I'm not quite sure yet. With Alex gone, the boys get to work on her three-point plan. First, decluttering the unappealing decor. People will come in here and, and not know anything about the past, because it will be dead and buried, gone. Mrs Polizzi hates these things. <laughs> Fond of that sunflower. Next, to entice the locals to the hotel's cafe and restaurant, Alex has arranged a culinary crash course for Bashir. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name's Andy. I'm the head chef nice here at the Castle Hotel. I'm Bashir. Bashir, pleased Sorry. to meet you. I'm hoping that this will reinvigorate not only his desire to cook, but also to put it on the plate better, more delicately, more appetisingly. People eat with their eyes. It's the first thing they see. They think and they go, wow, that looks really nice. Whereas if it was bland and, and colourful, they just think, uh Presentation. Yeah, presentation, no, that's, what it's, yeah. that's what we find it's all about. And to help John recognise the importance of customer relations, she sent the pair to charm school. I'm hoping that he's going to go along there. He's going to have the rough edges knocked off and rediscover the inner, cuddly John who we'd all like to find. We've come here today because Alex thinks we need finishing off. I don't need to go to charm school at all. It's uh, obviously here just out on a jolly. Alex is hoping Diana Mather, an expert in communication and etiquette, can help John appreciate the need for service with a smile. Your mindset's got to be that these people, complainers or not, are pots of gold. They are paying your wages, they are paying for the hotel, they are the reason that you're in business. You never go down to their level. You always either don't reply or say something positive. Thank you very much indeed for bringing this to our attention. That's, I mean, most useful feedback. Thank you. So we're going to do a few exercises today. 
I don't suppose you will ever have walked with a book on your head, will you? But we get everybody to walk with books on their heads. I said we were going to have a book on our head, didn't I? I know, yeah. sir. Right. It makes you walk with elegance and sophistication and confidence. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Quite, mate. Good, and off you go. Relax the arms. Very nice indeed. Excellent. He's a natural. <laughs> we make up 90% of our minds about somebody within the first 10 seconds of meeting them. Hello, good morning. Good I'm morning. John. So nice you put your hand you. out and we shake hands. So immediately you've caught the attention, you've come in, you look confident and competent. There's always an on switch that you've got to find and then switch on. No, left hand only. Out again. All right. Just the left hand. And shutting the door. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. And find out the reason why people are not treating their customers properly if they want to be in that business. So, gentlemen, I don't think there's a real problem. You have just got to put yourself in the customer's shoes, especially you, John. If you can't say something nice, don't say it. Sorry. Look at your customers as vital to your business and as nice people. OK? The way Diana puts it across is, is very good. I think I'm looking at the reviews now from a, a completely different set of eyes. The charm school might have opened John's eyes, but he's more blinkered when it comes to Alex's demand to present a more compact restaurant menu. It's not, it's not really a big menu, this one. Generally. I think you probably should drop that. It's very, very hard to keep mm. fresh melon and all the rest of it. Parma ham is very expensive as well. OK? OK. Halving the menu, I think that's impractical. You know, if we halve the menu, there'll be little or no choice whatsoever. Part-time minister and full-time train enthusiast John Humberston runs the Alexandra Hotel in Landidno, along with his partner Bashir. Everyone brings joy to this hotel. Some when they arrive and some when they leave. After two and a half years at the helm, the hotel's in desperate trouble, and John and Bashir are nearing the end of the line. They've turned to renowned hotelier Alex Polizzi to try to get the Alexandra back on track. That's better. I want to look my best when Mrs Polizzi walks up the stairs. One of Alex's first demands was to improve the hotel's identity by ridding it of all the unappealing and unwelcome clutter. Most of the signs that uh, Alex didn't like disappeared rather promptly, almost as fast as she did. In fact, there are no signs at all. The place is bare. There'll be no direction. We should have kept the key one there, though. People keep pinching my keys. Alex is back, keen to discover whether John's charm school experience has been equally transformative. I'm very interested to see whether their day at charm school has made any significant difference to how they behave with their customers. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks. Take care now. And I hope that John has at least started to find love in his heart for his guests again. The one thing that I want to put to bed today is this issue of how you deal with criticism. So, I am going to forward to you two bad reviews and see what, nowadays, your very measured response would be. So, read the whole review and then write a pretend response and let's see whether it passes the Alex Polizzi Charming Hotelier test. I've given John five minutes to come up with a measured, um, responsible response to this. Something which sets out his counter-arguments against the complaints, but does so in a rational, inoffensive manner, which convinces people that it actually it's the complainant that's got things wrong. So, darling, do you want to read out your response? To no. Me? Go on. All right, then. Dear Mrs Shufflebottom, First of all, let me assure you, we treat all our guests with courtesy, no matter which agency directed them to us, and are pleased you decided to give us a try. I thank you sincerely for your kind comments about our rooms and my staff. Let me assure you that I had no intention of giving offence. I must apologise if I gave that impression. I can only assume that my sciatica must have started to show the pain that day. And as you have seen for yourself, we try very hard to give our guests the best possible experience Perhaps you'd be kind enough to forgive us. Would you be my guest for lunch on your next stay? Oh, my gosh, darling. Whoa. Take a bow. <laughs> Can you see why that is better than answering the way that you did previously? Yes, my dear. John definitely takes these things too personally, but I'm hoping... 
I really am hoping that he's going to find a way to divorce these complaints from himself. John may understand the theory the customer's always right, but Alex now wants it put into practice. Smiling through the pain is one of the imperatives of being a hotelier. So I have actually done one of my favourite things, which is invite a bad reviewer back to meet him face to face. The review stated that the Alexandra was mismatched, poorly decorated, unclean. John had responded with, what utter nonsense. No. So, this time I'm going to test your customer skills in person. Oh. Right. Because we have this lady downstairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I am going to usher her up here, and you are going to, oozing okay. Tom from every pore, make the situation right. So, Josie Hi. and her family, this is Hello, John. Hello, Josie. Hi, Hi. 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 How are you all? So, I didn't write the, the nicest review, but it was honest. <laughs> when the owner responded, it was, um, it was quite a shock. He didn't listen to any of the feedback. He didn't acknowledge anything that we said. It just seemed like he denied absolutely everything. That's, that's the thing when you read the uh, reviews. You kind of get the impression that um, everybody's wrong and he's doing it the right way, you know, which is an incredible way of running a business. I, I just don't think it's very professional, really, to, to get that personal. Right, well, thank you for being brave enough to come yeah. back to us again. I'm sorry that you uh, didn't enjoy the first experience. That's uh, obviously yeah. not something we're happy about. I was pretty shocked when, when I got that response. It's, it's not normal practice. I'm very sorry that the experience wasn't a good one. It's uh, OK, but, but if somebody had just explained to us when we came, you know, we're, we're having a refurbishment, you yeah. know, it, things aren't perfect Indeed. at the moment, yeah. um, we would have been, OK, that's fine. But yeah. we, we basically take on board what you say. If, if you'd been like that with us at the time, we, mm -hmm. we would have come back. Thank you for acknowledging it in that No, way. no, I, I understand where you're coming from, yeah. Thank you. All right. Do you want some more orange? You're all right. Would you like some more? Yes, no problem. He answered every single point in a succinct and measured way. I mean, the perfect hotelier. Darling, you are absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you. I mean, you are a lesson to hoteliers. I mean, what a complete turnaround. He was a really nice guy, actually. Um, surprised me how friendly he was, and he acknowledged everything this time. If he'd, if he'd been like that in the review, then we'd have probably come back again. With guests now hopefully more assured of a warm welcome, Alex turns her attention to the cafe and restaurant. She believes that if John and Bashir can get their food offering right, it could be key in attracting some much-needed local trade. How did you get on with cutting down the menu? We haven't. Well, I don't do nothing about the menu because uh, I feel maybe we need to talk with you about it. I just think that you're making your lives too complicated. You're offering roast lamb, chicken, pork or beef. You only have to offer one of those. You don't need to offer 20 things for somewhere to be appealing. Yeah. Yeah? You. Word of mouth is the best advertising that money can't buy. And we have to make sure that every time anyone experiences any of your services, that they go away thinking, my goodness, this is very good value for money. We have to get it back on track, yeah? Good. For the final stage of her plan, Alex needs John and Bashir to get the menu right. She wants them to invite the resort's top movers and shakers for lunch to demonstrate that both the Alexandra and John's customer service skills are now fit for purpose. Next time I come, we are going to make sure that the great and the good of Clandidno come and see that this is not the place that it was. No. We've got to re-establish your reputation. This is a one-shot. One chance at a first impression. All right, my dear. Yep, we'll do our utmost. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Take good care. Bye, darling. All right, Thank safe you. journey. Bye. I must admit, I'm a little bit anxious about it because we will have to make sure our act's a good one. But, uh, if we don't make a a success of it this time round, then I think we might as well pack up and go home. To help John prepare for the big event, Alex's design team has been hard at work. Renovations begin in the cafe and restaurant area. And the makeover doesn't end there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at that. Yeah. We had a very nice logo designed. 
which has been applied throughout every area of the hotel, from the key fobs... Wow, look at that for a logo. That is something else, isn't it, eh? ..to the staff uniforms, to the guest information, to the signage. All right, what do you think? That's lovely. Superb, yeah? Even the menus enjoyed a revamp. A little bit better, more compact menu. As managing director, it's my job, obviously, to make sure that work's shared out fairly. So I'll do all the difficult tasks, which is the breakfast room and reception, and all those are yours, because they involve stairs. OK? All right, no problem. You're still here? Oh, I'm going now. Now you're walking into somewhere which has clearly... the whole process of a guest stay has been much better thought through. There we go. That looks wonderful, that. And John's wasted little time in spreading the good news. John's invited a lot of the big hitters in the community. Uh, I was after the mayor's secretary. Yes, I'm Or the mayor. We want to show the great and good of the town that the reputation of the Alexandra is undeserved. Could you put me through to Inspector Ian Verberg's office in Clandidno, please? It's incredibly important, both for him and for the future of the Alexandra. I'm just checking that uh, you're still OK for tomorrow, for uh, our luncheon date at the hotel. But as Alex prepares for her final visit, she's discovered John's charm school experience might be wearing off. Despite her demands, he's posted a rather colourful response to a negative online review. John has written a, I mean, a 2,000-word rant. It's quite astonishing. Whittering on about the breakfast, how it's not greased, how the tin tomatoes are Italian, how the pan au chocolat would have been better if she'd taken the wrapping off. I mean, anyway, I feel really upset about it. I thought we'd kind of done this thing. I mean, on one hand, he's the kind of pastor of a church, and so you would imagine filled with Christian goodwill. Mark? Where are you, little loony? On the other side, he's a really chippy bastard. Over the past three months, Alex Polizzi has been trying to help owners John and Bashir relaunch their Alexandra Hotel in Landidno. We've got to re-establish your reputation. This is a one-shot. We can't mess it up. Big day, but it's nothing we can't rise to. No. No mercy. John's invited a select group of influential dignitaries, including the mayor, to an exclusive lunch party. She has catered for them in the desert. Thousands. That's not even counting the camels. If they can impress the local movers and shakers, the hope is it will put the Alexandra firmly back on the Welsh tourist trail. I hope they've done what they bloody can to make sure that this works. This is their last chance. Alex has returned for her final visit. She's pleased to see that at least the hotel's exterior is now less offensive. This looks a lot better. It, it's given a completely different air to this place. It looks much more efficient. John! Hello, Alex. How Welcome to you? the Alex, Alex. <sighs> well, I must say, the signage looks wonderful. Mm. Does it? You look pretty good, too. Yeah, so do you. So my cup would be perfectly full of happiness if it were not for the fact that I read your last response to a critical review on the internet. Oh, the one that Bashir and I just typed in for him, that one. Darling, I thought we'd tackled this. Bit of humour, bit of ribald British humour. It makes you sound like a loon, OK? And I want you to stop it. We've done all this work. Now, we've got a lunch ahead. I really want you to make sure that you using charm from every pore. This is your last chance to dazzle people. To help the lunch event appear more appetising, Alex and her design team have transformed the hotel's cafe and restaurant area. The Wild West is no more, replaced with a bright and welcoming multi-purpose space, sure to attract valuable new trade. Let me show you your new all-day cafe, bar, dining experience. Oh, this is lovely. Bit less of the immediate impression that it's just, just a pub. I mean, this has got to work all day round, doesn't it? I'm very pleased with this. Good. Come this way and let me show you some of the other highlights. At the back of the room, an elegant new restaurant area. Clean, modern and uncluttered. It is much lighter and brighter, and I'm sure you're going to get an overwhelmingly positive response. 
Anything to say? Anything? No, nope, absolutely speechless. Spe speechless, grateful. Yeah. Oh, very grateful, yes. Thank you very much, Mrs. <laughs> Polizzi. The new look cafe and restaurant is ready for action. Alex is hoping she'll be able to say the same about its hosts. This event is absolutely vital to the success of the Alexandra, to whether John and Bashir can continue here. <sighs> they need a quick fix, and the cafe should be that. But with the guests on their way, she's worried that John and Bashir may not be ready in time. Someone's got to tell me what to do, darling. Uh, what well, that's me you want me to do? Uh, you, you, I, Just like, tell me what to you, do. You ask, you ask me, me to give you the instruction. Like oh, well, a... some, who is otherwise supposed to give me the instructions? All right, I'll go to do that for you then. No, just tell me. You can tell well, me. Well, we what can to... put the glass on the table. Fine, I'm going to get on with it. Then. Thank you. The clock is ticking, but I'm quite glad that Ivan and I are just tackling this because I don't want to leave it till the last minute. It was always going to be a bit of a kick while scramble. In the kitchen, Bashir is already behind schedule. John is as laid back as it's possible to be without actually being in bed. Right the second, I feel like just walking out and leaving John to it. Because, you know, like, what bit of this does he not get? The VIPs are starting to arrive. There are some big hitters from the local community. To add to the list, Alex has also invited some representatives from local golf clubs. If they like what they see, they could offer a new revenue stream for the Alexandra. Councillor Burchard, your, your worship. How are you? Hello, thank you very much. Hello, how are you? How are you? Oh, Great. Thanks. Good. Front of house, Alex is doing her best to hold the fort. Do you want ice? Ice But behind the scenes, lunch preparation is taking Bashir longer than expected. How are we doing in here? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? 30 minutes. I'll give you 10 minutes and 10. then sit them down. I hope it's going to be OK. I really do. But she's panicking a bit in the kitchen. There's lots of things to do. That's why uh, it's not easy. I feel like going and lying in a darkened room and gently screaming into a pillow. <laughs> to buy some time, John takes the opportunity to show off his bedrooms. This is one of our family rooms. Quite a big area, room, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very good, very comfortable. While in the kitchen, Alex decides it's time to take charge. Four pate, yep. one cheese and onion quiche. Thank you. Give. Do the minestrone or do this. OK, I have a problem, here. darling. There's one quiche. It doesn't say what kind of quiche. Chaos in the kitchen. I mean... Uh, uh three, three, four, well, four starters or how many? One, two, three, no, more than three, four. Four starters. I mean, this has taken years off my life, the stress for this. But starters, appetizers have gone down very well. I'm hoping that we can get through this whole fucking nightmare without any incidents. <laughs> Alex may have spoken too soon. The main course orders have been taken twice. Where did these uh, come from? These are the fresh orders that I just got told to take. So someone said to you, can I change my order? No, someone told me to take all the orders again. We took a second order, and it was different from the first order. Oh. Yeah, ah. yeah. Ah, it was him who told yeah. you. Yes. That's We're doing it. this next, and then the journalist couple last. OK, it should be ready in a minute as well. OK. Despite the chaos behind the scenes, Bashir's cuisine seems to be going down well. And the charm school has paid off as John works the crowd. Yes. The distinguished guests seem happy and, more importantly, interested in the new look Alexandra. The time selection here is wonderful. Compared to what it's been in the past, it's bright, it's cheerful, it's clean, and it's welcoming. I mean, I've been here a few times in the past, just a few, because I hated it. Um, but I would quite happily bring my mum here now. I think. Um, John's doing a great job. These gentlemen will remember more than anything what this place used to be like. It used to look dreadful when you looked in through the window, but, but now, I mean, it looks top-notch. It looks like a comfortable place to come. I'm glad that it meets with your approval. Thank you so much. It's nice to be able to see a local business that's, that's doing well and hopefully going to progress further on. Um, we've had a good look at the rooms, tour around, um, and certainly think we can do something with golfers visiting North Wales and, and push Johnson business, hopefully. Yeah. 
the Alexandra has been given the thumbs up. And the transformation is complete. Well, I must say, I've enjoyed working at the Alexandra. John and Bashir are a very fun couple. Hopefully, we're going to have made a big, big difference here. I had my doubts today that it was all going to work, but they did manage to put it out of the bag, to my great relief, and I'm going to miss them. Well, I'm sad to see the end of Alex, I really am. She found us, I think, on our knees, at least. She's got us back up onto our feet again. It's up to us now to, uh, to start taking steps forward. And hopefully, if you can remember everything she said, we might make some money one day. <laughs> <laughs>